Hey everyone, I'm Jason Dean. And I'm Colby Dane. And this is Real Physics, where we tell you what would really happen in Hollywood production. Because our disbelief can only be suspended so far. Hey everyone, this week we're pulling from your suggestions and covering an infamous scene from the movie Live Free or Die Hard. You know, for the first time, I think this one's going to be doable. Really? Yeah, it's not that unrealistic. Well, I think popular opinion in the forums will disagree with you. Right, let's check out that clip then. <laughs> So here we are again, the fourth time around, hanging out with John McClane. And once again, this normal cop is going to save the world from terrorists. But this time it's cyber terrorists. Ooh, cyber terrorists. And as his sidekick in this movie, he's going to use an Apple guy to help him fight cyber terrorists. Because, you know, apples don't get viruses. <laughs> right. Well, Justin Long, of course, who's very well known for all those Macintosh and Apple commercials, is the hacker in this, and he's supposed to be the one that can help defeat the cyber terrorists. And so Bruce Willis teams up with him. Now, you know, there goes the hood, and he's on fire. Now, who knows why a bullet shooting into the hood, you know, turns the car into fire? I, I don't know. Okay, so John McClane, he's gonna aim this car down at this ramp at the toll booth, and he's, you know, he's gotta get out of the car first. Ah! I don't think he really aimed it that well. So, okay, the car continues traveling, hits the ramp, into the air, through the toll booth, and into the helicopter. Oh, that looks Very perfectly yeah, plausible. Totally doable. Yeah, come on. But you know, that's not nearly as implausible as the idea of John McClane getting off scot-free without paying a toll. <laughs> <laughs> they lock you up for that. Okay, so we did some research on this and come to find out there's some readily available information on the internet about this scene. It really made it seem like we were cheating when we did this. You know, what we found out was that this was a full-on practical stunt. You know, the CG was only added for the debris and the explosion itself. That's right. They jumped a Ford Crown Victoria into an actual helicopter fuselage for this. I bet you guys are as surprised as we are. Well, if you remember, I'm not that surprised. For one, the modified car is clearly shown with a skid on the bottom as it approaches the helicopter. And for two, a little internet research revealed pictures of a suspended helicopter frame being smashed by the police cruiser. Okay, well, fair enough, all right? So now all we need to do is figure out how fast the car would need to be traveling to make the jump. Right, so let's do some math on this stunt and see if it can be done in real life. The car is initially traveling in the X direction, but when it hits the ramp, it begins traveling in the X and the Y direction. Right, now if we take the car's initial X velocity, then aim it at some angle off the ground while ignoring any reductions in velocity from the toll booth, it becomes very easy to figure out where the car goes after it launches. So first, let's show the general equations for calculating trajectory. From there, we can get an idea of how fast the car needs to be coming off the ramp. For a given velocity at the ramp, the equation for the horizontal component is horizontal velocity is equal to velocity times the cosine of the angle of the ramp. Right, now the vertical component is the same except change cosine to sine like you see here on the screen. We can find the horizontal position as a function of time using the equation horizontal position equals horizontal velocity times time. Right, and then the vertical position is initial velocity times time plus the acceleration of gravity times time squared divided by two. Okay, so from the scene it appears the helicopter is hovering fairly low. It looks like the fuselage is about even with the top of the roadway above the tunnel. Right, if we're going to take an educated guess, we're guessing the chopper's altitude is about 30 feet or around 9 meters. Right. Okay, so the car launches at what looks about a 30 degree angle. I would have liked to have seen more around 45 degrees, but 30 is what we get. Right, so now we just need to estimate how far the chopper appears to be from the ramp. It appears to be maybe about three times its altitude, so we're going to call it 90 feet or around 28 meters. Okay, so now we know the car has to reach an altitude of 30 feet or about 9 meters. When it gets to that apex, its vertical velocity is momentarily zero. So now we can solve this equation for the initial vertical velocity. Right, but to reach a final altitude of 30 feet or 9 meters and thus hit the helicopter, the ramp must launch the car vertically at 13 meters per second or around 30 miles per hour. Right, so now we can solve backwards for the velocity on the ramp. Unreal. Okay, so it looks like the car only needed to be traveling around 27 meters per second or around 60 miles per hour. So the height of the car at this point seems plausible. Yeah, but how far down the road does the car travel when it reaches that 30-foot apex? All right, well, let's take a look. Now that we know the velocity at the ramp, we can get the horizontal velocity. Right, that works out to about 52 miles per hour. And now we need to get the time that it took to get 30 feet up. Solving this equation for time then yields this mess of a result. 
Right, that mess then gives us an ending result of 1.3 seconds. So simple distance equals velocity by time gives us an X travel of 31 meters or 103 feet down the road. So we were a little off on the X travel estimate, but well within striking the body of the helicopter in midair. My initial thoughts were that this was doable despite its over the top nature. We made guesses about the angle, the speed, and the distance to the target based on the scene, and the math checked out too. Now we recognize that the car initially would have to be going faster than 60 miles per hour when it hit the ramp since, you know, it would slow down a bit, scraping on the cement, and when it slowed down some, going through the toll booth, and even after he bailed out, you know, it's gonna start decelerating. But even if it slowed down 30% at launch, 90 miles per hour as its initial starting is extremely conceivable from a police cruiser in that distance. Okay, so not only did we come up with a conclusion that this is possible, we know it is based on the stunt that was actually done for the movie. That's right, somebody just like us was, well, maybe not just like us, but somebody <laughs> was on set doing all of the math and physics calculations to make this stunt actually happen. Now, of course, they were using a car with a skid plate on the bottom and the toll booth were probably ramps, but with all these elements in place, it could have played out like we watched. All right, well, let's go ahead and call it. This is real physics. <laughs> there you have it, contrary to popular opinion. So, until next time, thanks for watching. See you next week. I'm putting that in the bloopers. Let my uh. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. Uh, at this point, I guess uh, my phone's going off. Hit, uh, hit the red button. Hit the what red button? Hey, There's not a red button. Damn it. So, uh, until next week, thanks for watching. See you next time. You're a jerk. You get time, I get weak. Why do you do that every time? God dang it. Okay, let's do it again. It doesn't matter. I mean, like, I know, really, I know. you know, but that someone, was actually a good someone's going to get on the forums and say, hey, wait a second here. Dane <laughs> gets weak. Time.